Uh, my name is William Solo. I'm a uh, choreog freelance choreographer in New York City. Um, I started dancing in high school and uh, took dance classes all through college, but I came to dance really mainly through theater. When I got into dance, honestly, I was more interested in the choreography aspect than the performing aspect, I think from the very, very beginning. Um, but I knew I wanted to get to a certain level of dancing that I could work with John Butler, Anthony Tudor, the, these choreographers that I admired. And so um, for the first 15 years of my dance career, I was able to work with these choreographers, with Alvin Ailey, people who I, I admired in both ballet and modern. For me, the process of choreography is different oh, yeah. than many other choreographers. I, I, I think each person brings to it their own methods. Um, for me, um, it begins with an idea, even before the music. Um, I've done ballets to no music, so it doesn't have to have music, but um, for me, I like the process where I'm creating, um, I don't create that, an actual step before I walk into the studio. So I never choreograph it on me, I choreograph it on the dancers that I have in front of me, because each of those dancers, they're, they're like paints to a painter. And you can have greens and you can have reds and you can have blues. And I don't know who I have until I walk into that studio. And so if I have a lot of blues, I'm going to create a very different type of work for that particular group of dancers. Because to have something created on you as a dancer, for me, that was the most fun. Because it's mine now, because the choreographer gave it to me, so it becomes me. And it's different when you're learning somebody else's part. And so it's, it doesn't fit you like that glove that I want it to fit like. Um, Jerry Robbins always used to say, you want to make it look like da the dance is happening at that moment. I did not actually choose to, to choreograph Appalachian Spring. Uh, the Santa Barbara Symphony um, asked me if it was possible, because they would wanted to play Copeland's Appalachian Spring, the sweet uh, Appalachian Spring. And um, I was a little, nervous at first because it's so closely associated with Martha Graham's classic version which is brilliant um, but I said sure because I love the music I love Aaron Copeland's music um, and so I said okay I'm going to do something to that music but I also want to pay tribute to Martha Graham to Agnes DeMille to Jose Lim the people the early modern choreographers who, who work with Tudor, and also in the ballet world with, you know, uh, Billy the Kid with Eugene Loring and all those wonderful, wonderful ballets that Copeland um, wrote music for. The challenge um, for a choreographer in creating a piece, I think, there, there are several approaches. For me, I can only speak for myself, but for me, it is, I like to tell stories, and for me, the people aren't just objects I'm moving around on stage. They are individuals with feelings and emotions. Um, so I approach it in a very Stanislavski type way. I, I remove that fourth wall and essentially the audience are just voyeurs and they're just happening to see the action on the stage. I don't play it to, to, to the uh, audience at all. Um, and so I spend about half the time with the acting when I'm working with dancers. And I think in today's world, we don't use that technology enough or people are not aware of it enough. And this is especially true also of the dancers today, that they have the ability to watch this most incredible artist today, watch variations, watch the way they dance. And it allows them to learn, to grow. And, and I think when we harness that, that uh, um, understanding of what technology can do for us, I think it will, just, it will just allow us to grow artistically in ways that we never thought were possible tw even 20 years ago.